Hello and welcome to the Holy Hour Podcast, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. I'm Gavin, and today I'm joined by Chaz. How's it going? Going good. I'm going to blow this weenie whistle and see if it works. All right. Weenie whistle. It didn't. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Hey, the weenie whistle has been blown in the honor works. of 40 yeah. years of the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used on a couple of the instruments. I don't know if you guys knew that. It's probably in there somewhere. Yeah, they broke no out the Oscar Mayer <laughs> wiener whistle like when they were sipping on some of that tea. There's very few instruments that weren't used on this one, I think. So, uh, <laughs> But we have gathered today to honor. It's been a while since we've honored a 40th anniversary official album. We kind of did the Japanese whispers last year, but... Um, yeah, 1984. We're getting there with the with the 40th now. It's starting. I feel like with every year, these are going to get creepier and creepier because they're like kind of now that we're entering into the golden era albums. Even you know all the dark era stuff yeah. always kind of felt like a whole lifetime before. You know, even though oh yeah, you know, I was just a little wee boy when those came out. And even this one, but now we're getting into where we've talked to people where they went to these shows and. You know, mm-hmm. and these yeah. are albums that were still fairly new in the tape store when I went. <laughs> so, it's, uh, especially, I don't think they were new. I just think they were just sitting there for a long yeah, time. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely by modern care standards, they were still new. You know, yeah. like when I got into yeah. them, it was only four years old at this point. You know, so <laughs> that's like, whoa, that was like the n- most recent album. But, um, yeah, yeah and so, uh, this blows my this album, like thinking about the timeline and what this album is, is like, this was before they wrote all their best stuff like like i I mean you could say pornography faith and everything like that but like their their most popular stuff and the stuff that took them over to the top which is yeah which is wild to me like it it seems like it i don't know yeah and in the sense that this kind of wherever you start with it you know i think most people would officially start probably with head on the door being like the golden era you know but like a lot of the opening of the door or walking up to the house anyway was this top area you know? oh, so it's you kinda... give, don't give it that much credit come on <laughs> I'm just saying, it's putting the gears in motion anyway and uh yeah it is crazy to think that all those great songs hadn't been written yet and they're yeah. they're still very much a, a indie band at this point really in a sense you yeah. know for you know whatever the comparison would be nowadays you know you look at the videos from this when they toured for this and they're pretty big rooms and stuff and they seem like they have a good following from the pop singles i guess is why people came out to those yeah. really but um but yeah they weren't playing stadiums no nah, right? yeah no is... they're yeah they were playing your your 2000 seat venue or something like yeah, that yeah like, where in, most bands kind of peak at you know <laughs> so, yeah 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 so uh pretty pretty wild and um and i guess the weirdness on the top and <laughs> i'm gonna keep saying on the top but uh in birthday celebration wise this is one of those ones where everybody seems to have a different official release date you know there's a couple of those cure albums mm-hmm. i don't know if it was that scattered between like the u.s release and the uk one or what that threw everybody off but just looking at it, like Wikipedia has it as May 4th. Um, the official Cure site had May 22nd down. Mm. Um, Rhino had celebrating April 30th. So they're pretty huge gaps in between what they're saying, the birthday. So there's people already yeah. on social media saying, happy 40th birthday, slicing up eyeballs. I think did one yesterday for... So we're kind of celebrating it like um, when your family would be like, your birthday's on a Tuesday, but we're celebrating it on the weekend. Oh, my God. <laughs> my birthday, it fell, it was two, it's always two weeks before Christmas. So my family always celebrated it on Thanksgiving because that's when the family was wow. together. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. We're doing yeah. this all Fuck for you, shit. Jazz. I mean, like, this give me turkey. a day. Give me the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got overshadowed uh, by pilgrims and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, May twenty second is Morrissey's birthday. I only know that because it's my son's yeah, birthday. Yeah, like, that's, that's uh, uh I, yeah. Would be pretty. I love that they did that on purpose. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Just for Morrissey, yeah. Or May the fourth, you know, would be the other one. Um, yesterday, the time of recording this was was the official Rhino birthday. So who knows when the hell it mm-hmm. actually came out, but. Bottom line is somewhere in May, and uh, so this yeah. is. We figured it didn't have to be too pressing of when we needed to record this. Maybe as long as it comes out in yeah. May. <laughs> so, well, it's May first today. Yeah, guys, we'll so. be a little early. Happy birthday, we'll be Tom. a little late. Who knows? But, yeah, yeah. But um, 
Yeah, and I actually went back and listened to the old uh, top episode with Donald and I, mm -hmm. episode 55, way back when. Wow. And, um, yeah, it was definitely like, oh boy, this is going to be tough because I don't really go back and listen to things very much. But um, it was definitely um, some some drunky drunk talk going on, but we, we yeah, kept it together. I once I got past the fact that one of us, I won't say which one, you know, said catafiller a lot, you know? <laughs> but, but um, yeah, we, we made some decent points. Henson wasn't on at the time? No, no. No, no? no. He, I think he even had caterpillar it now. Cat <laughs> okay, all right. Pretty good. Caterpillar. <laughs> but somewhere if you if you made it past the slurring you know it held up we made some decent points i was like oh yeah yeah so i'll try not to repeat myself for anybody that did listen back then but um yeah that's why this is cool i was like oh yeah i never got to officially hash it out with with Chaz. so that'd be cool but I was surprised I'd forgotten you had contributed to that one, though. You sent in a little self-recorded message that we tacked on Did at I? the end. Yeah, it was I like, don't fucking remember that at all. I remember the first one I think I said it was for, uh, for Wish. Just Like Heaven, or, maybe? Yeah, or something like that. No, I sent in the email to you that for was wish. pissed about the Wish, the, <laughs> right. the wish episode, and that's what like got me... You know, you were like, oh, somebody's listening. Yeah, I was like, yeah, actually has some valid points. We should have him on the show all the time. <laughs> but, <laughs> he's not just bashing shit. The yeah. Thing. But, um, oh, man, I can't. What did I say? It was you were because we rambled on pretty long for it, <laughs> naturally. And then at the end, I kind of wanted to end it with one more negative and one more positive. Um, not our Longtime listener Tyler gave a positive one, so we put yours there. Yours was it was very diplomatic though. You said you just didn't like it. You think it's all over the place. Basically, what we're gonna probably say today, yeah. where it's just not the best of their golden, you know, <laughs> yeah. time frame yeah. kind of thing. And what the hell were some of these choices that they made? But yeah, for the most part, you're like, I know some people like it, but not my thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're we're probably still in the same boat. I agreed with a lot of what. I said way back when, um, but I, conveniently Antonio couldn't make it today, so I wonder what he was uh, like. Oh God, the top! I think uh, <laughs> go yeah. on a business trip today. <laughs> 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 the shit people do just to not have to talk about the top. <laughs> but, uh, but there's some people out there that are just like, oh my God, it's my favorite. Yeah, era. so it, it was. That was kind of our my bottom conclusion there from the last episode was that Donald and I came to the conclusion that. One, it breaks a lot of new ground for Robert slash The Cure. Uh, two, it's a transitional album. If there ever was one, <laughs> it's definitely a transitional <laughs> album. And three, it's just super divisive among Cure fans, even to this mm -hmm. day. Some people love it. Some people just, you know, don't yeah. like it at all. So I think the hard part with saying where it ranks and all that kind of thing is... Um, where you put it in the full cure spectrum of like, you know what I mean? I kind of always thought yeah. of it as like probably my least favorite of the eighties, you know, perfect albums and stuff. Yeah, you know? definitely. But, but you know, I would still think, I think I definitely would take it over the self-titled one. Um, and four thirteen probably, you know, I'd still probably yeah. take it over those, <laughs> but even blood flowers maybe, but, um, you know, yeah, I would take it over blood flowers yeah, on the right yeah. day. Blood flowers. I probably like better. But it's it's a weird one. It's definitely you know, and I I remember at some point making the comparison a lot more, but I didn't in that album or that episode was uh, just how similar I think it is to the Wild Mood Swings. In yeah, a sense. yeah. You know, there's so many parallels to Wild Mood Swings because it's got the kind of all over the place themes and song types of songs. Um, the kind of not real supportive band, you know, at that point, yeah. even though he had yeah. those guys, but Wild Mood Swings kind of went into that phase where Robert was definitely just calling all the shots for the most part, you know? Yeah. Then, um, Overwhelming kooky, amount of use of instruments. Yeah, kooky instruments, different instruments, yeah. shit that's just all over. So, <laughs> so yeah, they really seem like they could be, you know, Wild Mood Swings could have been a part two to the top. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't yeah. Have, wouldn't the have bottom. Got the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have been a good name, but uh, <laughs> this is the bottom. <laughs> like uh, some might say that <laughs> that would be yeah. a very fitting name for Wild Mood Swings. <laughs> Not me. 
<laughs> but, uh, so yeah, it, it's pretty wild just to, to hear those you know thoughts again too. So I recommend digging back in and li- listening to episode fifty five if you're feeling brave and need more top talk after this. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, um, I feel like that we've discussed not this kind of way, but I feel like we've discussed it. Yeah, uh, that's a few times here and there. I um, wonder when it came up and stuff, but uh, I know we talked about like artwork and and fashion, and it, they'll come up in in this. You know, not as not as prevalent, but like uh, I, I feel like that we discussed some songs here and there because. Yeah. I I know we talked about dressing up, but it might have come up on a live album that we did. Yeah, maybe just so, dressing up yeah. from Paris. You know, yeah. Shake Dog Shake's always kind of around, same with Caterpillar, yeah. you know. So. And um, yeah, maybe just every little side rant where you or Antonio yeah. go, oh, yeah. the top. <laughs> and we spend five minutes on the top and then we all feel better. <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, you know, I guess as far as digging into the top a little bit, and then we could see if, if your opinions yeah. have changed any over the years and where and how. But, um, but yeah, it's a weird one just in the sense that it's right in the thick of that clusterfuck. And that's probably where we've talked on it a bit, too, is the idea of that post-pornography meltdown. Yeah. Doing the singles, doing Hyena, doing the top, doing the glove. All this is pretty overlapping. So I, I believe if I have the time right, correct, Glove had already come out by this point. Hyena mm. is like a real marathon recording session. So that was still going when when they start recording this in mid-83. Um, it still is recorded and comes out before Hyena officially comes out. So that <laughs> thing's still fucking going. Um, somewhere in there even, they put out you know the Nocturne Live Susie album. So there's a lot yeah. of shit that gets put out leading up that to That has this. to be frustrating for him that like I put out the glove and I put out the top before yeah. we fucking finish this album. This is fucking bullshit. Right. <laughs> and I think I remember reading even the concert one that would come out after, you know, when they tour for the yeah. top, he cranked that out pretty fast just to show, you know, how easy it is. You don't need to dwell on shit, which is kind of humorous now thinking of the cure, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, he's earned the right to take his time now. But back so. then he's, uh, he was kind of saying, fuck you all. Look how fast you can do this stuff, you know? And, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I mean the drugs helped. I'm sure, yeah, but like <laughs> you cracked out of your mind. And it, people often refer to this as being his probably closest of totally falling apart drug or alcohol wise, as far as just. Yeah. But he never really seems out of control with it. I think he's just physically spent and mentally spent, and you know, like just not sleeping, and you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know him personally, but he he seems like a guy that kind of like internalizes a lot of the stuff. And yeah. Doesn't, lash out at other people <laughs> right. or like you know keeps yeah. a lot of his things to himself until it's like the final moment where he can't do it anymore yeah exactly you know, so. <laughs> like, I'll do this and it gets yeah, a doctor yeah. note to quit yeah, he's Susie British. And the Banshees <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like you can just pause dude it's fine yeah but um yeah it's it's wild just to think because there was no real pressure you know that's something I was digging into in the last episode mm-hmm. but thinking I mean I'm sure Chris Perry was nervous because he wasn't sure if the cure was only going to kind of fizzle out after putting out some singles. So I think all that kind of backfired was that those pop singles were the most success the cure as a name Mm -hmm. had had yet, but at the same time, they weren't really a band anymore. (laughs) So it was a little nervous, especially when he's in another really popular, cool band, you know, it'd been really easy for him to just be done with the cure, which is a a more popular band. Yeah. Yeah. And that was basically fiction at that point. So you could see Chris Mm -hmm. Perry probably putting a bit of a flame under his ass saying, come on, let's do something. But at the same time, there probably wasn't, I mean, we're only talking like a year here of like really cramming all these things in. Like he, he just really wanted to keep going and going. So he's definitely a high functioning, you know, drunk, drug addict, (laughs) whatever at this point, you know, so (laughs) you can't blame him for uh, just standing there and not doing anything. So so pretty wild, was, but I mean, that might go into, you know, some consideration of these songs of like, were his ideas a little spread thin at this point? How much was he trying to, you know, contribute to Susie and the Banshees? What ideas did he spend on the glove? You know, like, where yeah. were these songs coming from? 
or maybe he was just really cranking things out. So, yeah, I don't, th- I don't know if he was spread thin, especially with like how diverse this album is and how all, like all over the place it is. Yeah, uh, I just think he was like doing too much at one time and didn't have time to process. Like, like <laughs> art and like his emotions and like everything and just kind of like threw everything at the wall. Yeah. And, you know, saw what stuck. So true. Yeah. Cause it is weird. Like for as much as, you know, people defend the top or don't like the top, it's really hard to pinpoint what the hits and misses are in a sense. Like it isn't mm-hmm. really the, the writing necessarily, it isn't really the production, you know, I feel like him and Dave Allen still did a pretty good job. There's some choices in there, but I mean, nothing yeah. sounds like ridiculously bad or anything. In my opinion, anyway, these are all mine. You might feel different, but, um, but you know what I mean? It's like, usually when you yeah. see like an album you don't like, you can kind of pinpoint where it came off the fucking tracks or something, you know, but it's like, this is just almost so weird that it's kind of like, I don't know. Was it really the writing? Because they could play these songs now and they're pretty cool, you know. But there's only yeah. a few total duds that I think writing wise on the album. So it's a, so I don't know. Maybe they'll come out more as we dig in. But do you have anything right off the top that you just like can pinpoint of why you don't I, like it? I I feel like there's some songs on here that if you strip them down, they belong on pornography. Mm-hmm. And if you change some of the instruments out and some of the some of the a little bit of the writing here and there they could fit on you know head on the door um and it just it's frustrating because i i the production is good but the i feel like this is the most dated out of all the cure albums yeah. sounding wise just like wild mood swings probably the most dated yeah. out of out of those later cure albums where you're like oh this is totally 90s yeah, yeah, yeah. like this is ugh, you know <laughs> right. and like with this one i'm like you know i've been listening to the past couple of days and i'm like man this is really like i feel like pornography faith and then anything past the top is kind sort of timeless. Like you got a little bit of the the cheesy uh saxophone yeah. going on here and there. But like other than that, I feel like any like a lot of those songs can be put in a point in time just because that's what you're thinking of. But I, I feel like they're like I don't think anybody's gonna listen to them and be like, Man, this is so 80s, this is so cheesy, yeah, you know, yeah. until you get into the top where you're just like Ugh, right. like what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? And like, I think maybe yeah, like... <laughs> because, yeah, it's a weird kind of 80s where you could be 80s like Japanese Whispers type stuff mm-hmm. where it's real synthy and it sounds more yeah, retro yeah. and cool yeah. now. But like when you're trying to do more rock stuff or like weird world influenced, you know, kind of stuff, it yeah. definitely shows a bit more. So, yeah, I think you're right with that. There's That's... definitely some hard rock stuff in here that that they definitely nail but like there's some other stuff where you're just like robert what are you doing with your voice yeah <laughs> like 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 why are you trying to sound bassier than you are which is the same problem i felt like he had on the self-titled where he's just like dude you're not this person like, yeah. this is not your voice yeah well, it's, it's like fun to experiment but yeah some of the choices are because this was kind of that's one of the main you know, pluses or minuses, depending on where you fall. But he uh-huh. really changes the way, you know, his experiments with his vocals a lot on this. And that's probably more residue from hanging out with Susie a lot and stuff mm-hmm. or just trying to take the band in a new direction. But, yeah, he's all over the fucking place with the vocals on this, which if you think about it, he hadn't done it all. I mean, kind of gets into that with the singles. But, like, it's so weird when you think of album-wise – pornography being the one right before this and then head on the door being the one right after yeah. it, you know it's like whoa those are all like yeah so much different different and better you know just yeah like, but he's definitely and, you know just going trying to go low and so he does the first time we hear the weird kind of club america piggy in the mirror uh-huh. voice kind of thing yeah. you know and yeah. then just the woos and like all that kind of shit is off the charts on this album which could you could also see as a transition between the the sound his vocals are on you know pornography and faith and then transfer into the more how he uses his voice almost as an instrument mm-hmm. going into you know the next the next phase of the cure but like this one it's just god yeah you, he has such a good 
forceful voice in songs like shake dog shake yeah that you could use that same type of voice in other songs on this album where you're just like you don't like why are you like it's almost like i don't understand what it is (laughs) because we've heard him live and like he's got a really strong voice in those songs and even on this album but like then you go into these other songs like uh even like wailing wall Mm -hmm. where it's just like it, it feels like this fake bass that he's trying to pull up from somewhere i'm like you don't have to do that man like you got the voice just believe in it and just push yeah. it out there and like it, it'll come out great yeah. but like some of the stuff where you're just like oh, 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 yeah. oh. and i'm just it, like, it's dude, just, like man it's like when you hit a keyboard with like the filters and the, and, the mm-hmm. and you really kind of just seeing where it can go you know yeah. i feel like all of it's like because it works great mm-hmm. on some songs and Cause yeah, all the way up through like pornography, he's kind of sings most of those songs pretty, you know, straight. You know, like yeah. there isn't a lot of the you know stereotypical Robert in those early albums. I guess that doesn't really kick in until like, I guess like Love Cats maybe would be the first one where he yeah. gets a little goofy with it. Even like even Let's Get a Bed and Walk or you know pretty straightforward pop vocals. You know. Um, but yeah, it's 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 pretty wild. Yeah. Or, and the, yeah, by dressing up and shit, he's just all like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure a little bit of the drugs at the time, but they're strong too. He doesn't sound cracked yeah. out or falling apart or anything, you know, or weak like the, you know, you hear those stories of some old replacements albums where they basically were propping him up while he's singing yeah, and he's yeah, slurring yeah, yeah, through yeah, everything, yeah. you know. But it's like. He sounds coherent and shit, but it's just, wow, okay. So, I mean, it seems like it's a conscious thing just to be like, fuck it. I'm, like you're saying, using the vocals as an instrument at this point, too. Yeah. Because we need more instruments on this album. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he uses his voice so powerfully in, in like, 100 years. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he transfers that over pretty well in Shake Dog Shake. But, like, he misses the mark in a lot of the other songs where he doesn't need to. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, we'll pinpoint which in a minute. Um, I guess real quick on the production side, you know, this was the first time Dave Allen came into the picture. Um, I went back to listen to that one too, just to see if he had some stuff that I had forgotten about this album where he said he basically inherited this album because mm-hmm. engineer Howard Gray was kind of running the first few sessions, I think getting a lot of it recorded. So he was being real humble saying he didn't really have to do too much. He just got all the pieces and put it together. Um, It's credited as Robert Smith, Dave Allen and Chris Perry, actually. So again, Chris Perry somehow gets in for a producer credit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to so get they, those residuals. Yeah. I think it's pretty loose on that, but um, so that's pretty cool. And um, he talked about how, uh, fast it kind of came together for him oh he said he disinherited wish because he didn't mix that one but so it was like yeah. the, his his time with the carry he <laughs> kind of came in yeah i got yeah. the half and halves but um uh so yeah it, it seemed like it came together pretty quick uh he said that once they got the tracks in there recorded the rest of the top in like 10 or 14 days um and he sounded like he had a pretty good time with it all you know even though then i started rereading other stuff and they talked about how uh, recording the top sample for when they spin the song for the top, you know, the yeah. little, it took like 12 hours to get the perfect sample. The <laughs> like, they were fucking high, man. Yeah. That's that's what it was. They were just like, you hear it, man? Yeah, They're like, no, not, it's man. It's not right. It's not right. Spin it again. <laughs> so it's like, well, there's one of the 14 days right there. So. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, I mean, on top of that, I guess the weird part is, you know, know how much robert was doing um in the sense of you know everybody always says that's the kind of first thing even in the reissue the first line of the liner notes is this is basically a robert smith solo album this is basically a robert smith yeah you know? and he's even said you know I, I didn't really remember him saying it that much i always felt like that was a critic thing but i found a quote where he said the top was the closest thing I ever come to making a solo album. I didn't really have a very coherent idea of what the album was. And I think it shows it's probably the patchiest Cure album. <laughs> Later, there's a quote in the liner notes of the deluxe reissue where he calls it the flat out worst Cure album. <laughs> okay. I don't know when he said that, you know, but, uh, but yeah. But I think a lot of that is probably being 
kind of reverse humble in a sense too, because he knows he did it, so he would call it the worst. But you know, there's an argument <laughs> could be made. Yeah, but he. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's like he didn't he he didn't do the drums, which is a whole side thing we can praise Andy for because yeah. that is a, a shining part mm-hmm. of the album, I think. And um, and then I think yeah, all the guitars, all the bass. And even the bass, for as much as, you know, it's always better to have Simon in there, of course. You know, the bass lines are pretty cool. Listening real close to bass lines this last couple of weeks, you know, I didn't, there was never really a, any song where I'm like, that bass line's just stupid or, you know, they're just a little weak or something. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I think feel he did like a good the, job. I feel it. like the core of the band and the music isn't, it, it's not bad. It's like all together, if you stripped everything down, I, I think they have a pretty good album. It's just the, they're adding so much shit on top of it that yeah. you don't need to like even with his vocals like going back to that it's just like dude did if you took all this stuff down like you you'd have a pretty good album here right. like like i think you would like like one of the main examples i think is uh um piggy in the mirror mm-hmm. like i think that song other than the beginning yeah. of it i think is good it's just like with the other shit in there, it's just like you kill it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it might be, you know, we'll get to that later probably more, but like the idea of are the live versions better? Mm-hmm. And I think in a lot of them they are. And I don't yeah. really know because Simon's pretty much just playing the bass line that he played, but he's still, you know, it's Simon playing it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's strictly the bass line, but I think it's like you're saying, there's not all the little goofy layers and shit. So if you strip it down to like a live version, even like Piggy in the mirror, when he's singing it, his voice isn't full on. He doesn't yeah, quite do raw, Club America get, bad on this one, but he, he does yeah. start, especially where it starts out in the beginning. Where the shapes in the yeah. <laughs> so it definitely starts that way. But I mean, like that's all rules on in orange, you know, I remember mm-hmm. really digging it on that, but, um, but you yeah, get a lot more is, raw, li- raw vocals in, in those live songs yeah. than you do with this production and, in in everything. I yeah. don't like, and I wonder like t- with Shake Dog Shake, it's just like his live performance on that. And I mean, the whole yeah. band in general is just so fucking good. That yeah. It's just like, man, if you wrote a whole album like this. Yeah. Shit. And that one, you know, the recording, <laughs> I think, is top form, too. There's nothing that mm-hmm. they should redo or anything on that. But yeah, they nail it. And that's, um, you know, I guess as we start to get wild mood swings again yeah yeah exactly (laughs) starts out great (laughs) yeah real rock like god damn where are we going with this one this is gonna be awesome (laughs) like oh god (laughs) exactly lots of comparisons but um yeah i wonder with with the production side a lot of it is the instrumentation too i think like not only Mm -hmm. are they throwing too many little whistles and things in there but like the sound choices, you know, and mm-hmm. it's not that I'm just not big on world sounds or whatever, you know, but it, it is like a lot of them. I have a note for banana fish bones in particular later, where it's just like, it's every sound that you would skip on the keyboard yep. when you're going through the keyboards. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like the most annoying tones of everything. Like straight down to using an actual fucking harmonica, even, or just yeah. like, God, it's like this song could have been so cool if it was just like a real janky piano or something instead of like a uh-huh. Yamaha yeah. fucking classic eighties Yamaha flute sound or whatever the fuck you know? so yeah there's like a lot of that yeah do another caterpillar like yeah you know to it like like let's get funky with it but like not that weird yeah because caterpillar yeah he uses <laughs> a lot of the kind of weirder to us sounds but it works you know and yeah, then, yeah, like, yeah you know and a lot of just like the synth flutes the middle eastern flutes and shit and that kind of the sitar sounds and stuff you know they have their place and but the the fact that i mean this is just Susie and the banshees influence through and through i think because they use all that shit a little more effectively but you could tell this is the first time where he's still got some like glove residue hanging around and like you know what i mean he's still he Mm -hmm. wants to try to do that a bit and it is funny to think of how many of these could have ended up maybe as Susie and the Banshee songs. Like I said, I don't know how much he even considered that or they wanted him for that or maybe he tried and they shut him down. Who knows? <laughs> but it's like you could hear a, a lot of these becoming Susie and the Banshee songs and they might have actually been better. <laughs> I don't know. but I, I think when they were ta- having that band meeting and he's sitting on the floor playing with toys that they were like, <laughs> we're not going to take any of his song choices <laughs> yeah. here. It's like, well, about 
swimming horses. <laughs> like, we'll take this part. <laughs> but, Got a song about a dog. Yeah, but I, don't know. I mean, I think they could have, you know, worked better in a sense too. Maybe with her singing it. So yeah, I don't know. she probably, he was just she probably, really in. Uh-huh. He was really into animals on this album. Like it's yeah, just a lot of animal I, references. <laughs> I, I think they were out when he starts talking about animals, and they're just like, "No, nah, we're good." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of literary references, but there's shit that nobody would really catch right off the top. I think you know until like years later when he drops it, mm-hmm. and you know comment that that's what the song's about but um yeah lyrically it's pretty wild um i guess go back to the liner notes of the album and what he played so basically he played everything andy played all the drums um Pearl only played sax so it's easy to mix up who played what on this based on the yeah. live band but basically Pearl showed up with the album art which we'll get into too there's <laughs> a whole other <laughs> but uh, showed up with the album art and uh he was like hey why don't you play some sax on this because you got some sax so he only played on uh give me it so um no guitar on it so robert handles all the guitar lowell actually <laughs> is credited as other instruments on this which i kind of right. always remembered as being an almost dig on disintegration as being the only but this is another only <laughs> other instruments so maybe it was a dig back then too because the more i reread on this he was like really fucking checked out on this album too so but uh, uh, there's also so many instruments in this album True. that like maybe they just fucking forgot <laughs> maybe and just he like play more like, than anybody on the album <laughs> 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 he's playing all the sitars and the fucking yeah. middle eastern flutes and shit so i somehow doubt it i was just watching a live thing too where basically little frozen on stage while Porl's oh over my there god yeah playing all yeah. the keys all the guitar and everything so um not to get on any more low bashing but yeah he was pretty much checked out i think for this one the fact that they always call it a, a robert solo album too he's like i'm <laughs> fucking right here I'm just- <laughs> when all the pictures and promo shots are like him and lol yeah, and yeah. he's like, like i'm yeah. right here dude i'm like two-thirds of the band and it's like it was pretty much a solo album. If there ever was a Robert solo album, it was this one. And he just kind of yeah. casually looks down, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah. So. This is the time period where uh, Lowell kind of single white females, uh, um, Robert, where he just tries to dress like him. Yeah. And like, it just, it's really bad. It's, not working. it's really, yeah. yeah, it's not working at all, man. Yeah. And like, yeah, this was the point in time where he was like in, in his book where he was start, like, he was gone, right? Yeah. Like, it, like from here to, from here to disintegration, um, he doesn't really remember much. So, which is upsetting. The part of the band everybody wants to know about, yeah, just yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I don't era. remember any of it. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> it's like, great. <laughs> it's like I broke my foot during an orange. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, awesome. tell us about World War II. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, son, I <laughs> yeah. was drunk the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, that was interesting that he's other instruments on this one, too. And, um, yeah, I mean, and then the idea, too, is something I'm kind of reminded of listening back to the old episode when people say Robert's solo album, and, and then everyone's all like, Jesus, well, I hope he doesn't do a solo, you know, but it's not like yeah. it was his opus solo album or anything. It was what he had at the time, you know, he, yeah. and kind of the same as Wild Mood Swings, I would think, you know, it wasn't like... He had been waiting his whole career for this moment to use these songs or whatever as his solo. I I think it was just at this moment, I have these songs I'm doing. I'm basically recording the bass and everything, (laughs) all the guitars. I I think it's a reflection of um, chaos in his life. The, of course, the drugs he was using and then also just the type of music was probably he was listening to at the time i know he's a big bowie fan and bowie was getting really fucking weird shit yeah in the 80s and like weird you know using different things on his album i'm just like you know and like well he wasn't the only one but like you know it was a very kind of experimental age you know punk was falling apart and you know it was like i was listening to like a weird uh just kind of random mini series podcast on like the history of MTV kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't realize 
how big the year 84, like this was pretty much done, you know, and then put out mm-hmm. early 84, but just 84 and like the MTV was like a huge, I think it was like thriller came mm-hmm. out and like yeah, Madonna's yeah. like, like a virgin one. And it was like all these, Oh, uh, born in the USA, like all these mm-hmm. mega pop albums, you know, so I could almost, not that he's anywhere near that world at this point, you know, but like almost as like, let's get real fucking weird. You know, I could see yeah, how yeah, he, especially yeah. after doing a string of super poppy potential hit kind of commercial radio songs, you know, like let's go to bed to love cats. You know, he dabbled in that a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, but then you could see where he's like, let's take some drugs and get fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, and this is just an idea. I would have loved to seen a, cause he's, big reader and everything i would like to see him do some sort of 1984 george orwell dystopia (laughs) kind of this is where we're going album like not not too on the nose but like you know something like that yeah yeah. like other than this you know (laughs) (laughs) so i guess as far as big thieves that in that vein you know everybody calls this the psychedelic album too and um, I'm not, I mean, are, were they just on psychedelics? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't think there's right. nothing real, like, I don't hear psychedelic music in this at all. No, like, I wish maybe there it's was, just because it's of. not my genre. Might distract me. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> what would you even consider psychedelic shit was just, like, lots of wah-wah and, like, Yeah, like, Grateful Dead kind yeah, of like shit, jam band, Jimi you know, Hendrix just, would be the yeah. biggest connection to him, I guess, but... So yeah, I don't really hear. I mean, maybe banana fish bones and stuff, or I get maybe, that, but, but I don't. But even them, like when even Lowell's book, I remember him saying it, and Robert has dropped. He's like, "Well, our psychedelic album, it's very psychedelic." <laughs> and I was just like, "I don't know, man. It's just weird." But I don't. Yeah, like I said, it, just, maybe the artwork added yeah, in too. I, I think that's what like maybe gives it off. But like, I just think of it as a very awkward and weird rock album yeah i mean i don't know yeah, like, yeah, I could, yeah. like you know stepping away from anything synth heavy or pop like exclusive yeah. like we're saying from the it's singles. not god it's definitely not god <laughs> yeah, definitely not it's god. not punk like their earlier <laughs> stuff you know it's yeah. it, it like you know it, it, it's i don't think it's i don't think you can put it in a in a in a genre other than it's fucking weird rock album weird. and i love weird music i have yeah. so much fucking weird music but like this is like I don't know what kind of weird. We're just, just like, yeah. this is, like, like, it doesn't work. Yeah. Like different part types of weird put yeah, into the yeah. same song. You it know? doesn't it's flow. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's part of the co- incoherent kind of all over the place vibe that mm-hmm. a lot of it is. Cause yeah, if you have a song like dressing up and Celine Dion sing it or something, it would just be, <laughs> you know, a pop song or whatever. But the fact that they're doing it with these weird instruments, you know, with this weird voice, it's just a weird ass new wave take on a pop song, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's see. Andy, I guess before we dive into specific tracks and stuff, he's kind of a big factor because it's the first time yeah. we're getting non lol drums. They kind of dodged it with the singles because those were either, even if it was a real drummer playing, mm-hmm. let's go to bed. It was pretty, you know, electronic sounding. It could have been a drum loop really. And yeah. the walk was, and then love cats was new wave jazz. So that was just kind of its own <laughs> weird thing, you know, but uh, so this is like the first proper cure album where we don't have, Little with drumming. drums, yeah, with, <laughs> with drumming or little drums, however you want to word it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it it really saves the album in a sense. If you had Lowell sit there trying to bag out something yeah. to match these songs, it would have been a disaster. If he had something, and yeah, he was he had worked on the glove and done the singles, so they were pretty close, I guess, by this point. But still, yeah. You get the vibe. He's still kind of session dude at this, you know, and that was kind of Andy's thing anyway. Um, I only say that for songs like, you know, Empty World and stuff. He was probably like, what yeah. do you want me to play? <laughs> you know, and, and he's like, how about a marching beat? <laughs> you know, like where it wasn't totally. But um, but yeah, he crushes it, especially coming right out of the gate with Shake Dog Shake. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, just I, a fucking cool rock it, it song. Just, it just sucks they waste his drumming on this album. Yeah. Like it's just like the only shot we get with him. And it's just like, it's kind of, yeah, it is. A shame. Like, that was... But you go into Boris next. So, I mean, you yeah. can't really, I mean, it, but it's just like the first time you have a drummer 
like a legit drummer and no, yeah i'm not taking anything away from lol but like he's not andy and he's not boris yeah you know and like i just think that like man this is like kind of wasted his yeah, all his talent on this is. one album I'm just like yeah lol's drums match perfect for those early albums but he yeah but did kind of max out you know i always give him credit for the for making those albums so perfectly what they are but at the same time you couldn't really keep that going especially with mm-hmm. these kind of songs and it's funny you said that though, because I jotted that down as a note. How in the past I'm always like, yeah, it's kind of a shame we didn't get a little bit more synth cure after Japanese Whispers was my big slight complaint. <laughs> but I'm glad they went into the golden era or whatever. Yeah. But then there should be a footnote of like, yeah, it is a bit of shame that we didn't get more Andy Drummond on proper cure songs. But mm-hmm. it is tough because like by head on the door, that's all fucking Boris and you know, I wouldn't want to swap that yeah. out. But if they had squeezed another album in somehow in between those two or something, it would have been cool to hear Andy yeah. really get into it with Robert and playing some cool shit. Cause yeah, like I said, he kind of saves a lot of these songs, you know, like shit like even Piggy in the Mirror and Banana Fish Bones or songs that are just kind of floating yeah. around as cool mediocre cure songs you know like they have cool (laughs) rhythms and stuff there's different shit going on you know so and he might have been their long-term drummer if that fucking tour wasn't true disastrous and mess there and yeah yeah, it's it's a shame for sure but who knows but uh yeah it's cool to hear those directions of breaking new ground with robert's songwriting and that aspect because you know he was writing with that in mind you know yeah um knowing he doesn't have to go back to the mumbly kind of gothy dark era stuff. You yeah, know? He, yeah. That's probably why he was cutting loose vocally and stuff too, you know, cause he can do it over these cool rhythms. So that was kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, also kind of the start of like romantic cure in a sense too. Like even though he yeah. doesn't have a ton of it on this, maybe Caterpillar and stuff would be the closest and dressing up. But like we didn't really have any of that through the, you know, dark era albums and shit, you know, or I mean, it is romantic in like a sad goth way, I guess, but like not, you know, as you start inching towards kiss me and stuff like that, you know, or mm-hmm. you get a little bit more of these kind of, yeah. If you're going to make a mixtape for somebody that you like, you're probably not going to take anything from <laughs> free, <Faith> or <laughs> free head on the door. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, it was the first dabble into that outside of the dark realm, you know? So, uh, <laughs> So yeah, it's 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 pretty strange, and um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe we should uh, do the track by track. Or, yeah, you want to do artwork first or track by track? Uh, let's do artwork since yeah, that's going right. on the outskirts. All yeah. right, so clearly your favorite. Uh, Kira, oh yeah, Kira. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Safe it's to the fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I hate more. <laughs> this or the self titled? Yeah. I would even put Blood Flowers in there because of how pixelated it yeah, is. Yeah, if Blood Flowers was clearer, I'd be fine with it, but it just is so yeah. shitty. But um, yeah. But I'm yeah. going to have to put, just because I like some of the stuff inside the like the liner notes and everything. For the top? That, yeah, for yeah. the top. That like, yeah, the self-titled and Blood Flowers are definitely down there. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one is just, I think there's too many, the green is really off-putting. <laughs> To start the, yeah, the, the green on top of it. Yeah, like, what the fuck? it is just so like. Uh, but it's odd because it's it's bad. I don't want this to sound like because I kind of like the top, you know, but it's yeah. bad. But it matches the album really well. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like it does kind of have like the middle Middle Eastern flair, you know. It has like the psychedelic vibe to it. So I mean, it kind of does work. Like you're saying, I think if you. My thought would be that if they'd taken like one image from the inside, like the crow kind yeah. of thing or the weird um, fossil, you know, just made that. Like I've seen bootleg shirts and stuff where it's black with the gold. That would have looked cool, yeah. I think, you know, like just do the black with the gold with the weird font even you could still use. But yeah, something with the like watercolor washout psychedelic tie-dye shit just is like oh i don't know yeah i just there's too many colors going on i don't mind the gold i like a lot of the drawings that that poor old did um that are inside the album yeah um uh and then even if you get the i don't know if the artwork is different on the lp than the than the cd 
Um, but yeah, I did. I, I like a lot of that stuff, and I've used some of the stuff on on shirts and yeah. everything. Um, but overall, it's 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 a mess. Yeah, and not it really not is anywhere dream. close the top <laughs> near near. You know, it's favorite. all to the bottom of yeah the, the green. I don't. Yeah, it is the green. When you said that, I was like, oh yeah, that's it. If you just swapped out the green, the top, the title in green would like. You can just make it all gold or something, but yeah, yeah the green I'm like, what color would you put on there? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> there's nothing I'm like, left. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, man, what color would you go there? I mean, I guess you could go yellow or or I don't know. Yeah, because if you go with red or blue, it's gonna bleed into it. Yeah, um, so you're gonna have to go with gold, I guess. But like that green is just <laughs> it's so off putting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is weird. <laughs> Or just don't put it in the middle. You could have put it on top of the blue like the spine has, you know? Yeah. Be kind of yeah. Better. But I don't know who are we to tell parched art. But, you know, it is odd because they usually are pretty uh, don't miss, you know? It's, yeah. It's usually yeah. a pretty yeah. solid bit with that. But uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, that's all towards the the bottom of the pile of artwork. Goes. Yeah, like, and at least the self titled has the excuse that children did it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh, it's cute. You know, whatever. But uh, I mean, what were they? Twenty five here and on on <laughs> yeah. psychedelic drugs. Yeah, they're and like, cool. So, that looks yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, like one hour to look at art. You know, in between jumping in the taxi and oh yeah, yeah, and yeah the mushroom yeah, yeah. tea was wearing off. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> so, I I think. Po- Pearl, uh, Pearl was just drawing shit, and they were just like, "That looks cool." And uh, I'm just like, "Yeah, that, man." That, <laughs> it's totally that picture where he's wearing the sunglasses with his feet yeah. up in the studio and the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> that was the day they okayed the artwork, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's where we stand. I think I'm in the same boat. It's definitely near the near the bottom of the pile there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not the top, but the bottom. Um, yeah, and like if they kept the drawings, if they changed the color scheme, I don't know what you would do with it, but mm-hmm. like the I like all the drawings and, you know, the font of the band is yeah, I could do without oh, that one too. Something it works, but yeah, it's a little too <laughs> angular for my taste, but uh And they're trying to it looks like they're trying to go like Almost Middle Eastern, yeah. kind of, with something like that, which doesn't fit them. I guess they're trying to fit it in with the music. Yeah. Because I guess it totally fits the music. Right. But it's just... It. <laughs> it's like, it's like, is it really the whole theme of the album, though? It's just like one song. <laughs> but anyway. So, yeah, maybe it'll make more sense as we do the uh, track yeah. by track. So a lot of these we've already kind of touched on, so we probably don't need to dwell on them too yeah. long. But, um, yeah, so kicking it off, Shake Dog Shake is, you know, amazing. either the best <laughs> or the runner-up for best, depending. Yeah. But really, it's, it's hard to argue. The fact that they still open shows with it to this day mm-hmm. is pretty pretty much says it all. Do you think it's yep. the like best or your favorite um, just straight up rock cure song. Like when you think of cure as a rock band, this would be the Live. one. Cause even this like, is up there. Want is up there. Yeah. Um, but even like that want and like a hundred years and stuff are very kind of new wave still rock. Yeah. You know? Like I feel like you could play this for a dude that just, Loves classic rock almost or something. You'd be like, yeah, that's pretty bad. I guess, man. Shake, dog, shake. Just, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, would you throw Fascination Street on there? Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, that'd be a good yeah. one. That, even though that has I'm like... I'm trying to think of something off a of Wish that would be on there. Um, yeah. Maybe Cut or something. But I don't know if it'd maybe, be my favorite. But that's um, kind of pretty rocking. Or Never Enough, I guess. And stuff like that would be the... Obvious choices, yeah. even though I think this is way oh, better. God, but, that's um, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> wrong yeah. number even or something. It, it's you know? de- yeah. I, oh God, <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> All your favorites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. As far as the straight up rock songs, this is definitely in the top three. Um, I'd have to think about it for a minute, but yeah, yeah it's definitely up there, especially live. It's so good. Yeah. Live. And that yeah, I don't even know if that had anything to do with it. On top of obviously, he said. They wanted to play it at the Rock Hall induction for Andy more mm-hmm, than anything, mm-hmm. but um, the fact that they played it there in Rock Hall, you know, is in the title. Yeah. So I felt like it was like a great choice to to yeah. come out blazing with that, as opposed to like 
we're we're being inducted for being a rock band and we yeah. opened with love song or something you know yeah. it would have been kind of yeah. so he just showed cuz i feel like it rocks more than anything on the self-titled album mm-hmm. you know which was an album that was supposed to rock real be hard. a rock album yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's way fucking cooler than anything on that album but um, absolutely so um, so yeah pretty cool uh again those drum drums are great on that um that was one in particular where in the last episode i was it just hit me that day that we recorded i remember thinking this might have been a pretty fucking cool Susie and the banshee song i'm so Mm -hmm. glad he didn't give it to him but uh that would have been pretty cool to hear her sing that because i could see her really like spazzing out on it and singing it really good too that would be cool um but I'm glad he saved it <laughs> or it got turned down, <laughs> whatever the situation was. <laughs> so I could see He's Robert talking being, about animals again. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should start a little side tally of how many of these have animals in it. Maybe every song has an animal in it. It might. I think it might. <laughs> Looking at it real quick. <laughs> Some kind of insect, bird, or creature or something. So, uh, all right. So, yeah. Uh, there's a cool little shaker. You know, I did the full on. Oh, yeah. I guess I have to admit. I was like, I need to just do like a full on ear headphones in the dark kind of listen to the top because yeah. I haven't done that in a while. And um, so we, we have these little gummies that I don't take that often. But I, <laughs> I was like, well, I got to get away from my, <laughs> my usual beer buzz. So I took one and just let it kick in and listen to the top. And, and it was cool because just in Cure albums in general, a lot of times you have your earbuds, but they don't work as, yeah. you know, as the full immersive kind of uh listen and you know i'm not sure if i ever really noticed the shaker that that pans around during the choruses of shake dog shake there's a little shaker yeah it's like that goes around your head while you're so i was like sick then i freaked out and jumped out the window but speaking of going crazy bird mad girl is the next one and um as sequencing is something I think I have an issue with on this album. I'm sure we dwelled on it in our old uh, revisionist yeah. history of track listings episode that we did. But uh, yeah, this one's a cool song. This one more than a few coming up. Um, but I don't know if it's like the number two kind of single spot song, if it's that caliber. But it is a nice song. I love it. But it's... Uh, it's yeah, weird. it's towards the top of the best songs on this album. Yeah. So, but uh, you've used it a number of times as an intro. Yeah, um, it's good. It's got a good intro uh, to it, I think. Yeah, um, it's very light and fun, especially coming right after "Shake Dog Shake." You know, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, this is close album's to going, pop song. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Album's not going bad. Not yeah, going bad. We're, we're still not a bad second there. song. <laughs> and um, yeah, inspired by the Dylan Thomas poem "Love in the Asylum." Um, surprisingly cool bass line too. This is one mm-hmm. I noted. It was like, yeah, that's kind of a cool bass line. And, uh, yeah, that's just almost kind of a maze too, while giving it credit of how close this jumps and how fast to like, what will be the classic golden era cure yeah. sound. You know, this one doesn't quite nail it the way pretty much everything on hand the door does, but like you could see he's heading in that direction now, you know, yeah. and you're like, okay, yeah. It seems drastically different when you can think back to like the Dark Air albums and stuff, you know, where there's nothing like these on this. Yeah. You know? I mean, this I guess is one could... of those songs that I think can end up, would it could have ended up on Head on the Door. Yeah. Um, with a little reworking and everything. Um, I, I think it could have been on on that album. So, yeah. so. did they play this one live? Not much. Yeah. No, I didn't think no, so. I don't think I've yeah, ever. It's kind of. Yeah, it was a shame. Yeah, so, tons of cool little tracking. This one too, like we're saying, they overdo it on a lot of these songs. But this one does have mm-hmm. a few little, little first time we're getting those little coos and stuff from Robert, where they actually <laughs> kind of work, you know, where he's just going Ooh, in the background. There's something, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're like, cool, all right, whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it could have been a single. I think it was, you know, if they were. St- Stretching for more singles from this album. I don't know. I guess yeah, Caterpillar, Shake Dog Shake yeah. should have been a single. This could have been the third single, if you really. Like, yeah, but, uh, probably. But um, if any of them were, it would have gotten my third vote, I guess. <laughs> 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 so you're pretty all right with that one? Yeah. I, I, I give it a solid six and a half to seven. Yeah. 
on um, you know especially if i'm judging by this album i mean if i'm judging by cure songs and all i'd probably give it a five but like yeah. in this album i'd give it like a seven yeah so yeah if shake dog shake and caterpillar are 10 yeah. 9.5 maybe <laughs> yeah <there you> <laughs> yeah and uh you know i guess that's the point is it's supposed to be about you know insanity innocence yeah and, but it, it, yeah. it's a little out there lyrically too with the polar bear shit and everything which is cute and fun <laughs> but at the same time, like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about but um but yeah so this one's got bird technically like mm-hmm. reference maybe to birds more but then polar bears drop polar bears yeah the, animal of choice for this song yeah <laughs> so, um so yeah weird and wonderful to then we get into wailing wall which seems way too early in the album to go here in my opinion i would it, it is but i i still i like the 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 bones of the song yeah um i i think it's a definite precursor to uh burn Okay. Um, yeah, especially little... that intro. Um, <laughs> yep. And then you get the, the drumming in the background, yeah. you know, just coming up. Um, uh, I, I do think it doesn't belong in the sound, <laughs> but <Yeah>. it's, <laughs> I, I think it's, it sounds like a cut from, uh, from pornography that they just didn't work out. They yeah. just, like, let's put it on here. Um, and it's got vultures in it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like lyrically, even like it definitely belongs on, on, on pornography. True. Yeah. That's a lot of the same notes I had put down where this one could have worked in the dark era for sure. Mm-hmm. Even the beat, it, it's probably the only one that feels close yep. to an old low yep. kind of style, you know, that kind of rumbly when they when you watch them play it live too it's like there's barely any guitar going it's just the bass line and the drums that are yeah. carrying it and then he'll kind of play a few little riffs over it mm-hmm. um so that's kind of more pornography style when you strip it down live but uh yeah it's it's weird you know and it's just like lyrically you know something they hadn't really and probably don't do a lot even after this where you it's a pretty distinct kind of mm-hmm. you know thing he's talking about you know he, he claims it really happened where he lost his shoes at the wailing wall and was walking around that's why his feet were torn up or something <laughs> so i guess that part was literal like a country song or something yeah <laughs> but the rest you know was just the, the the crazy sounds changed him and stuff so but yeah i don't know it's cool i like it at various times more than others, but I do feel like it's more of a track eight or seven or so, you know? What yeah, you definitely not of? at the top the top of the album there, uh, but, like, it, it's... I mean, it doesn't belong on the album, but, like, yeah. it's it should be, like, the last track, maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Finish it that way. True. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Give Me It is definitely way too early in the album, too. Um, oh, good Lord. Yeah. This song still annoys me. I don't know. Where, I don't want to jump the gun. Is the, are you in the same camp on this one? I yeah. This is yeah. one of the few that I'm pretty anti. Even though a lot of this might sound like we're being full anti, I actually do like this album for the most part. But uh, this song I could do without. It's just it's drumming on it is way too over the top. Mm-hmm. A little bit just. Or maybe that's just the production of it, but like it's it's a little too loud, yeah. Uh, for you know, but and then Robert is just I don't it it doesn't work at all. I I really don't like this song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a, uh, further proves that yeah I, I don't like yelling Robert even when it's not on the self. Maybe that's album. it. He's yelling and shit that's gotta and, be it. <laughs> like that. That's that's self-titled Robert there that yeah. I really don't like. Yeah, like just the forced vocals. I don't like yell Robert ever yelling at me. I mean, you could yell yeah. maybe I don't know like the kiss works and stuff, but it's like it's got to be more like agonizing or something. This is just kind of yeah. like I don't know. But yeah, it's just yeah. kind of annoying, and it it does feel a lot longer than it is. I mean, it's three forty, which is kind of long for a song that has pretty much it's a minute yeah, and a half it, worth of substance you know and it yeah just, it really does yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it could have been a better punk song maybe just go it, full fucking hardcore with it you know but uh, yeah but he doesn't that's not his vocals like nah. that's he was ne- he could never be a hardcore singer you yeah. know but like it's which it, yeah, it doesn't take a lot of talent to do but like his his vocal range it's not there yeah and so. especially if he's doing these more all over the place range mm-hmm. you know it's just kind of 
Um, to, yeah, it was meant to be a glove song, which makes a lot of sense. You can see that. And it should have been yeah. a glove song. <laughs> <Should've> <laughs> saved, saved it for the glove. Uh, the sax drives me fucking crazy on this. I'm glad that it yeah. got Pearl into the band. You know, I got it. Yeah, it got Pearl on the album. Yes. But, uh, I wish she would have played guitar on it. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> it's like, how, about, how about the instrument you're good at? Let's play that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I guess it's good sax. I don't know, but it's just I guess. really kind of annoying. And it's it's, the guitar part actually is really annoying. That was something that I hadn't really. I always blamed it on the sax because that just kind of comes in with a little like. But there's yeah. like a swirling kind of really fucking annoying guitar that just keeps going in the background. <laughs> Maybe it was the the gummy really amplifying it when I was listening to it. I was just like, oh god, that's so annoying. So, but yeah, I mean, I guess the whole song is supposed to feel kind of claustrophobic and frustrating. Oh, it definitely does. But it's yeah. but you know. And just way too early, especially being sandwiched in between Wailing Wall and Dressing Up, you know? It's like, yeah, it's just like, it's, what the fuck was that? Oh, that's like a track nine if there ever was one, but <laughs> preferably a B-side. But you a know? B-side, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You find out 40 years later and you're like, man, I'm really glad that didn't go on the album. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, so then, then Dressing Up, we got the, the classic synth flute coming in on this one, which... It's a sweet song, but it is a little annoying. I think it doesn't work quite as good as like some yeah. Kiss I like era. it live. Yeah, um, it's it's a song that transitions live better. Um, his vocals, he doesn't go as wild. I don't think live as yeah. he does in this one. And I oh I skip. This is a skip. Yeah, like, like <laughs> I mean, I listen to Wailing Wall. Sk- I skip the next two and then go right to Caterpillar. Yeah, like I mean, it's it's just I it, unless it's live, I really don't want to hear it. Yeah, so. I'm not crazy about it either. It's just, it's cool that it's this kind of sweet little song that comes back after that chaos of Give Me It, but at the same time, yeah, yeah I like the Paris version a lot better. Um, it must be for those it, reasons. I've never really done a AB yeah. listen or anything, but like his vocals, yeah, they're just a little too, <laughs> all right, we get what yeah. you're doing, but you're a little over the top with it by the end, you know, and it's a... Uh, and it's got. I, I think the song itself has some good structure to it, and I, I think it could have been used in a different way. But like, they just shat the bed on it. Um, yeah. I think I know it's, there are people out there that love the yeah, song. Yeah, I've like heard their it. Favorite and I'm, one on that. Yeah, album, and I'm like, I'm great. sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's just it's our yeah. opinion, and we we know you love it. Uh, I think it's a sweet song, but like, it's just it doesn't work. Uh, well, I mean, this whole album doesn't work, but like, it just, <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's not, what it's not the a song that I'm going to go to. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And I'd made a note that if any, it's hard to tell when he's experimenting with his voice that much, but if any, based on what we know of how, uh, you know, which drugs he was on and being tired and strung out, this one sounds maybe the most where he's a little mm-hmm. like just, oh, <laughs> or just fucked up maybe more than yeah. like not nailing it or anything. He's just, uh, just sounds like what I imagine he was going through at the time of hopping in the taxi to go to whatever. You yeah, know, this one yeah. definitely. He's like, yeah. I'll do the vocals. And just <laughs> lean him will get something in the booth. And there you go. And when they record it live, he's off of them. <laughs> so yeah. off, off, off all those things. So. Exactly. So, um, so then we flip the tape over and Caterpillar starts over the next sign, which is perfect the record. But um, yeah, near perfect song, cool production, all the choices of weird ideas actually yeah. click for once on this. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think a huge part of it is just, it's a great song. You can play it on acoustic guitar, piano, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and it's still just a great song, catchy um, and still weird, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think everything they tried to do on this album comes out you know, on the Caterpillar that it, it, it works. Yeah, so totally. they just miss the mark on everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got the wild vocals going still. It yep. works. The, you know, weird, all the different instruments and yeah, they, it's, just doesn't work on everything else. Cool so. drums. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Really do. Yeah. Really good drums. Yeah. Um, Piggy in the Mirror, as we touched on already, it's just a weird ass one. A gig, kind of a good rock song, but it's chill. It's a weird, like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I guess it gets more rocking by the end, but, um, 
He said it's I, I, about self-loathing and, you know, just picking on himself. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you get that vibe? I don't look at, I don't do that every morning. Nah. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you fucking pig. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking fat piece of shit fucking pig. So it's like, geez, I guess the oink, criticisms oink. are getting to him at this point. Yeah. It turns out he's yeah, very I, sensitive. <laughs> I feel you, Robert. Yeah, Robert, I'm there with you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, um, get it. I don't like the in, I don't like the intro of the song, but I I actually really do. It goes with Bird Mad Girl, where it's a, I think it's a good compliment to the song uh, before it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it it's it you know I I would put it probably like a like a six point five. Yeah. Um. So yeah, maybe the fourth a, best song. Uh, yeah. Fifth, maybe I like Wailing Wall a lot. So okay. Cool. Yeah, I think it, it works good in the sense of, um, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head now, like the main key sound is pretty much just an organ sound, mm-hmm. which is a little more organic and nothing mm-hmm. too stupid sounding like the Yamaha <laughs> sound bank of, you know, so yeah, I, I yeah. think when they stick to those kind of sounds more, it, it works better. So Yeah. All uh, the sound, I don't know if you watch Bob's Burgers, but all the uh, sounds that Gene would play on his keyboard I, are, are the ones, yeah. He's yeah. done banana oh, are all the ones that they play on this album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like, much. don't do it. <laughs> Should have just been a fart sewing, uh, sound. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, oh God. Possibly my least favorite song coming up next, though, uh, Empty World, yeah. which I never really had too much issues with as a kid, but over time, it's just really, uh, just I like it less and less over. It's just, it's got nothing. A couple good lines in there. The vocal melody is technically kind of cool, so maybe if they had just totally scrapped the marching band beat <laughs> and the fucking 1776 flute, as you said in your class. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's just two of those, you know, you're talking yeah. about armies and it's yeah. just like, eh, and no. If I, if I want my kids to march around my yard, I usually put this yeah. one Yeah, and it's like, what the fuck, where did this I don't get from? this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so, um, yeah, maybe different instrumentation, a different beat and something. Just think a little longer on it. That's why I was thinking back yeah. to Andy, he's just sitting there and he's like, so what? And he's like... It's about an army. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> this is where I think Lowell's drumming would have. Yeah. Fit if he had just pounded that same beat out on like a tom yeah. or something like a four yeah, tom. Yeah. Or something. Absolutely. Might have sounded a little cooler, but uh, that, yeah. that yeah, that snare is a little bit too tight. Yeah. <laughs> like, it God is, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're changing up the mushroom tea on that one or something. <laughs> oh, man, what the fuck? So that one. Ooh, and um. And weird, because, yeah, most of my least favorite ones were kind of piled onto side A, so this kind of slips into the, the second part of the record. Uh, luckily, it's well, short, th- though. It's real short. I, I was going to say, I think <laughs> I think side A and side B just kind of, like, mirror each other pretty well, where yeah, it, maybe, the first two songs know. are great, and then the rest of it just kind of falls off. Yeah, there's ones I like a lot, and then there's ones I could go yeah. the rest of my life without hearing again. <laughs> um, banana fish bones is a weird one that I, I always go back and forth on, you know, kind of have a sweet spot. In my heart just cause as a kid, I was so like, wow, this is fucking wacky. And I really liked it. But like over time, like I said, it's just the sound choices again. It's just like that fucking keyboards out. It's just, that, like, yeah. Yeah. just uh, sounds so like, Bad 80s keyboard sounds, you know. If they just changed that to anything else, I think it would have worked a lot better. A saxophone? (laughs) Yeah, maybe not a saxophone. (laughs) Or a Middle Eastern flute or something. Uh, Yeah, didgeridoo? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, there's no didgeridoo. I bet you didgeridoo don't there, Robert. (laughs) There's probably something buried somewhere in there. There's a didgeridoo. um, So, yeah, this one is another one based off the Salinger book, I guess, or I thought at one point yeah. it was a short story or something, but yeah, something a, like a that. perfect day for banana fish. Um, so not sure if this one was like, just, I don't know what, what they were going for, but maybe like you're saying the most psychedelic, but maybe, know, but just, like, it's just, it's, it's wild. Um, like I said, I listen to a lot of weird music, and I'm thinking of some some bands I listen to that are like, have you ever heard of the the uh, genre power violence? But it's just uh-uh. like blast beats and like just like really high pitched screaming and just guitars, just like as fast as you can fucking go. And like a lot of these bands incorporate synth 
and just as high pitched and like wild and all over the place. Yeah. I can listen to that all day. All right. And you'd probably, and like you'd listen to it, you'd be like, what the fuck are you listening to, dude? Right. And I'm like, I fucking love this. Love and but like I hear this and I'm like, God, this hurts my head. Yeah. Like it's the synth where I'm just like, God, guys. <laughs> right. Like just yeah. hit a different button. Because it is one that definitely watching a live clip because it was thinner. The sound was mm-hmm. still annoying that poor was playing on the keyboard, but it wasn't as piercing, you know, and it wasn't as up yeah. there in the mix. And then when he switched to the guitar, it was like a crunchier guitar almost too. That mm-hmm. had like a bit of distortion. So it actually rocked more. So yeah. it, it definitely works a lot better. The harmonica is still cool in the sense that I'm maybe the only song that cares ever used a harmonic. No, there's got to so be. There's got to be others. <laughs> yeah, 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 but not a lot. Not a lot of harmonica, especially in that like kind of friggin'. Yeah. Blues Brothers style, like it's. Going. I was gonna say, I was like, there's no way that uh, that he didn't want to pull out his like inner hoodie and the blowfish yeah. and just like put a harmonica <laughs> on top of his acoustic guitar and yeah. attack, or Bruce Springsteen. Get, get Dan Aykroyd <laughs> out there and do yeah, some harmonica yeah. for the. <laughs> Joins, Bruce I, Willis joins him for that one or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this song, if you use, if you rework it or like the live versions, and you, you got to take the synth out. Like you've got to get rid of that. But yeah. I, I think other than that, I think the song works. Um, I, I just can't get past it. Yeah. Like I can't get past that. Sound. I want to rewatch like, the the 2014 one now with uh, where they played a lot of these live with mm-hmm. like Reeves and Rogers on, on yeah. keyboards and stuff just to see how much of the tones shifted a little bit or like Reeves would play it on guitar as opposed to, you know what I mean? I think there's yeah, a lot of that yeah, going on. Yeah. Cause I remember watching that and actually digging a lot of these, uh, but, um, then we get the finale one and this will be the last title track finale song we've had pretty much on every album leading up to this, but this will be the last yeah. one until blood flowers. And, as much as I like the song still, it is a bit weak compared to all the other finale title track songs. Well, it's, I don't know how pornography is really that great, but, either. <laughs> but uh, it's... Shut it's, your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. done with this podcast. <laughs> the rest I, of the I album's can't, I, don't, but... <laughs> I, I, I don't like this song at all. It's way yeah. too fucking long. Yeah, it's a little plotting, you know? Just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is one where Simon could have really done uh-huh. something better. I can see that, yeah. <laughs> Not sure what, but something he could have come up with something a little better, I think, just because it is such a kind of trance, you know, like hypnotic kind of feel yeah. to the song that he could have definitely come up with something a little more melodic and cool, I think, and or grittier. But it's cool in the sense I like it. it the vocal performance is like really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really feeling. There's some good lines in there and the melody and stuff. But yeah, it's not really. Is he talking about? I, I just uh, next to. I think next it's it's compar- comparable to Wailing Wall, I guess, where it's it's a more depressing, slower yeah. song. It's just it. It's boring. Yeah. It's boring as fuck. Like it's <laughs> there's nothing to it. Where like in pornography, I I get something out of it. Yeah. Uh, compared to this, where I'm just like uh, I'm falling asleep. Um, and God forbid you have it on like repeat because then you start off with Shake Dog Shake next. And yeah. <laughs> you're fucking awake. <laughs> but totally. like I, it doesn't like it really does not fit. Oh, um, yeah. maybe if you want to throw some synths in there or something yeah, or like. You know. mm, world so, stuff going yeah, on yeah for like, once the first time on the album they kind of underproduced that one you know they could have put something uh-huh. else in there yeah <laughs> kind of spice it up or sing it a little extra harmony or something but yeah it is pretty uh when it's or that flute thing that yeah get that flute <laughs> back <laughs> yeah yeah why not <laughs> and uh but yeah for the when when the song ends you're you're about ready for it to be done too so there isn't really a wanting <laughs> wanting it to just keep going like, I mean like you're waiting for that or uh, <laughs> yeah you're waiting for that album to be done by now yeah <laughs> fairly short album though you know it is still like, like 10 I don't know what the full yeah. running track is off the top of my head but uh just the fact that it was still in that era of like, eh, cool, get in, get out, do what you gotta do. You know, I guess they keep that going through head on the door even, but uh, yeah, um, 
Yeah, it definitely ends quicker than I was expecting. I was like, oh, shit, we're already done. So there it is, <laughs> <laughs> the top. So I don't know. I guess if, as far as, you know, the reception, when it came out, it actually got pretty decent reviews and stuff. People gave them credit for it being weird. And um, you had cited one that I stumbled across again, too. But I remember in your uh, synopsis in the last episode, you had said that there was a critic you had found that said, in 20 years, Cure fans will cherish this album. So here we are, 40 years. <laughs> I'm not sure if cherish is really the, the, the one. If but, they uh, would have stopped. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if it was the last like it, Cure album yeah ever. where you're just like oh man like where could they have gone after this yeah, sort of yeah, thing yeah. but after they put out head on the door like it's just like i don't want any of that shit yeah you yeah, know i either want old depressing shit or i want some of this new shit like in <laughs> right. like, like like yeah yeah it's such like a a bridge you know and that's why it is like i think the most transitional of transition albums because it Everything that they do right on this, they do way better on Head on the Door. You know, mm-hmm. the Head on the Door mm-hmm. still has some, you know, kind of Spanish guitar and it still has the yeah. Kyoto sounds and shit. So it still dabbles a little in the weirder instrumentation and even. Um, but the songs are so much better. It's so much better produced. It's just all the. Yeah, production, I think it got a little muddled. Um, it, it's it's one of my. Uh, I mean, it's definitely isn't as bad as Ross Robinson, but yeah, yeah I, I think out of uh, from Faith up and or 17 Seconds up until um, the self title, I think it's probably the least, my least favorite produced album. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I think they that just could just be and, just the songwriting too. But like, yeah, yeah there's stuff that like where I'm just like, the drums are too loud on this song. The synths are way too fucking loud on this song. Robert's vocals are way too loud on this song. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's <laughs> just like it's kind of all over the place. So yeah, the choices of what they did and you know, yeah, uh, so, yeah, I agree. But I feel like they were just finding their way to head on the yeah, door. Very true. You know, so it's yeah. kind of like it opened the gate for those kind of things. And if if nothing else, it deserves credit too, in the sense that it kept Robert rolling when he could have very oh, easily yeah. rolled over, died, gone solo, just joined the Banshees, just kept doing pop singles, or you know what I mean. So yeah. it definitely hit the hard reset, you know, on what the fuck the cure is. And mm-hmm. after that, nobody really knew probably what the hell he was going to do because this kind of further the way I always say the, the pop singles <laughs> like cleared the way yeah. for pop cure, you know, after the dark era, yeah. this cleared the way for like weird ass cure, you know, like at this point yeah. he, he could fucking do anything, you know, it was mm-hmm. like, and he was smart because then they took pieces of all that and made it work for hit on the door and those great albums. Yeah. But even, know, but, even up until, um, wish like you had some of this world music that they used on on wish and and definitely uh wild mood swings yeah um that works a lot better than this yeah, yeah, um yeah. uh but yeah there's just there's uh you know they go weird with like catch yeah you know that's not a normal cure song nah, you know yeah. but like it works you know and but it doesn't seem that weird especially coming after this and stuff you know it so doesn't like- <laughs> so yeah you're very it's very true <laughs> very honest yeah yep, I, I i get what you're saying so yeah. i Maybe I do have to look back on it with some a little bit more. Yeah, because it's um, odd as a kid coming in it right after Kiss Me had come out and then getting the lump sum and how this mm-hmm. never seemed weird at the time. It seems weirder now when I overanalyze all the shit looking back, like just weird as like a weird yeah. album. Like at the time, it was like always something I was just like, yeah, Cure just does all kinds of shit, you know, like coming into them with Standing on a Beach even. I knew that they had, you know poppier stuff i knew they had darker stuff mm-hmm. and you know just their thing you know and the top was always weird but it wasn't like wow this is like a whole different fucking band you know i almost felt like pornography was weirder as a kid because i was just like what the fuck's going on on this album you yeah know? <laughs> yeah but like this was just goofy pop songs to me you know but now later looking back i was like how much it shifted <laughs> all that i'm going, yeah. Like, yeah that's some crazy shit going on but yeah so pretty pretty wild I guess uh, as we start to wind down, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you got another show coming up, so uh, yeah, I got to record right after this. <laughs> Do a double duty today, Dub- yeah. Just like Robert, it, you're getting your taxi and take yep. some drugs and yep. go on over and this do your next podcast show. is gonna be so fucking weird yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drink i'm some gonna experiment tea. with my vocals yeah, so. <laughs> um, hi guys 
different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excommunication. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck happened on that last show? But, uh, Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see. I guess as far as the 40th wrap up, then weirder, what, any thoughts on your conclusions? Did it change a lot? Any for you, or is it still just always? <laughs> I think I got a little bit more respect for the album. Um, and I, I see where some, where they've taken some of those things from the top and used it on other albums and, uh, they work and I'm, don't know if they wouldn't have made this album if that stuff would have been added in there you know you listen to burn you're like man would they have put that flute in there if they wouldn't have put it on the top right and you're just like because that that's perfect like i can't imagine that song without that flute you know and if they wouldn't have experimented with before would have ended up on that song right you know or yeah, like the like, first hmm. time on Head on the Door being when Robert sings a little weird on Close to yeah, Me or something, yeah, he would have been yeah. like, that's fucking silly, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but yeah. after this, he's, he's like, like yeah, he's just like, I look like a dumbass on that whole album, <laughs> I can do whatever the fuck I want now. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, well, lots of freedoms given. So, so. Very true. I yeah, I have to look at it a little bit differently now um, than I did before, other than just taking it as an album at itself. Yeah. Um, I, it's not good, but like, if you look at it as the center of the spider web, I guess, if you want to, mm-hmm. I, I guess you could <laughs> see it branching off of there. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fork in the roads and all that kind of yeah. stuff, right? You know, you can't, can you get from, I guess the singles helped, but could you get from pornography to the top or uh, por- pornography to head on the door without something like this? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And maybe probably not. Yeah. So, yeah. So good on it. Um, I guess God one last it, I have to respect this it. album now. <laughs> not entirely, but I guess the one kind of putting it in perspective, last credit we'll give it is um, it does hold your attention. I guess that goes back for me anyway, of it being shorter, or I feel like kind of the problem yeah. with the self-titled and even 413 Dream is that they're the only two Cure albums where I kind of, maybe because they're longer or what, but you just kind of get yeah. burnt out before the end even, you know, especially with all the yelling and the pseudo rock dogs and stuff. But it's just like, this one at least held my attention a lot. You know, I don't think I've ever been like, oh, this is still going when I listen to the top, you know, like I've <laughs> definitely felt that a few times with the self-titled and, you know, and 413 even by the end, I'm kind of like, all right, I'm just going to skip the last two, you know, I always turn yeah. those off, but like this one, if I'm in the mood, you know, and that's usually just because I'm sick of the other shit, then I usually tough it out to the end, but I don't know. <laughs> See, a lot of skips for you on this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean four songs three maybe i would probably put three in here i would i would use on a mix if i was going to make a cure mix yeah and i had to put songs off of here i mean i would definitely put shake dog shake and caterpillar but if i had to pick a third one it would be bird bat girl um but yeah i other than that i can't like, like I just like <laughs> I don't want right. to tell people about this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you did good. You toughed it out. You revisited. I did. You, ah. you, you ripped the scab off and gave it a good. <laughs> look. Yeah. And uh, yeah. This, this now, time. now next we have to do the 2006 deluxe edition. Yeah. Um, maybe uh-huh. the 45th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we'll there is some good shit with the B sides and outtakes. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, for the most part. Did the best it could with this album, and uh, yeah, yeah. Moving on from here, next year we have the head on the door, so that's pretty cool. I can't wait for that one. I'm really excited about that one. Crazy that that's gonna be forty. So um, yep, so it blows my mind. But I'll let you duck out of here, so I'll do the wrap up and uh, oh, well, send thank these people. You. Unless you have any deep thoughts on the picture disc that you record store picture didn't disc. get didn't get <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Says nothing it all. <laughs> yeah nothing uh uh thank you uh i i did appreciate going through this album again the last couple of days um i i do respect it a little bit more i really i don't like it anymore yeah. than i did before but <laughs> you know um, yeah. i think i still pretty much feel the same way as i musically and how the album came out as before um 
Uh, I think I appreciate Wailing Wall a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, as I, I link that a little bit more to burn and pornography. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, overall, you just uh, like all the religious vibes, right? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to. I want to sit down and talk to Robert and be like, "How did you end up at the Wailing Wall? Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just the day off you on the drunk, tour, <laughs> or was it like well, they purposely I get took around you this thing? What is this? Thing? <laughs> I just, can't go up it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is wrong with these people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but yeah uh yeah i give it uh it, it's still at the bottom towards the bottom yeah. um it's not at the bottom but uh yeah it's i don't think it's gonna move up yeah um unless they put another shitty album out um which, <laughs> it just slowly starts yeah, pushing it yeah. up there yeah <laughs> right on. you guys keep putting putting them out this thing keeps going up the ranks there you go so. <laughs> <laughs> However it works. Oh, awesome. but yeah thank you i appreciate it uh love you guys gavin love you i appreciate it um and yeah thank you and uh for donald out there (laughs) go back and listen to the old top people you'll enjoy yeah yeah yeah, thanks man go have a good show i'll catch up with you soon all right bye Yes, actually, I take it all back. I take it all back, and uh, you know, I think that does it for me here too. Um, so I'll wrap up. I hope we didn't come off too harsh on the old top, but uh, you know, hate to poke fun of it too hard on its birthday. But I think its variety and diversity really are a saving grace for this album. Much like Wild Mood Swings, you know, a lot of Cure albums you have to be in a specific mood for to fully absorb, but these two albums you can really put on and just enjoy um, when you don't know what kind of mood you're in or don't care what kind of mood you're in so you just want to hear some cure these albums are perfect for that so the top is golden in that case and we'll leave it on that positive note can't wait to revisit it in 40 more years see where it's at but until then let's just shout out the patreon and bring this thing home what do you say Check out this list of good-looking characters. We've got Donna, Craig, Jeff Hilton. We got Jeff Cortland, Jones, Sue, Ben, John, Alan, Allison, Dion, Namicio, Matt, Bunny Lake, Danny, Coulter, Matt Ford, Tom Johnson, Tom Burns, Letty, John Roberts, Francisco, Jason, Craig Bellinger. Amber and Nicholas, Arno, Chad, and Shirley, and Tanya, who would like to spread awareness on 988lifeline.org, suicide and crisis hotline with over 200 crisis call centers located all over the U.S., available 24-7, offering free and confidential support for people in distress and numerous prevention and crisis resources. So call or chat online if you or anyone you know is in need of help. Tim is part of New Waterloo, an independent hospitality development, design, and management company that owns and operates hotels and restaurants all over the U.S. and beyond. Find their many locations at newwaterloo.com. Scott Kruger is co-hosting the Sarlacc Digest, a weekly Star Wars podcast that airs every Wednesday evening, 8 p.m. Pacific time on YouTube or Facebook, or you can catch the replays everywhere that you listen to podcasts. Along with that is their new bi-weekly shows that rotate every other Monday on the Sarlacc Toy Chest or Beyond the Pit. Find all these shows at the Sarlacc Digest YouTube page. Dana is a motion designer and animator ready to help your business or project. Check out her amazing work at graphics.tv. That's graphics with an X dot TV. Check out curethreads.com to admire and purchase Kate's original cure inspired art designs and artwork on a wide range of quality products. And you can follow Cure Arts Collab on Instagram as well. Be a part of the Cure Artwork community, sharing cool Cure art as new themes are announced. 
And on behalf of Lisa, visit Dickens up in Calgary, Canada, and uh, catch a great show or event up there. You can see a full listing of upcoming shows at DickensYYC.com. And likewise, if you're near Little Rock, Arkansas, you can follow Jessica's Q and go to Club Nevermore for a very gothy night out. Clubnevermore.com has a full listing of shows and events and details. And of course, Chaz's other podcast, The X Communication Station, is always pumping out quality programming weekly. Check them out as they shed light on life in the church. Stream it everywhere that you stream all the things that you stream. As for us, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. You can follow our Facebook and Instagram pages so you can get additional content and info on the show. Rate and review if you should be so kind. And uh, always welcome to email me directly at gavinconnor at gmail.com. All right. Thanks for joining us and wishing the top 40 years of excellence. You're a weird album, but we love you. You know we're only roasting you out of love, right, Top? Right? You know we're cool. Okay. Well, now it's everybody out there's turn. Go pop a gummy or drop some acid or drink some magic mushroom tea and put on the top. Let your freak flag fly and see what new feelings come to you. Let us know how you... uh, how you interpret it all. So thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. Talk hard.